Hey guys, welcome. Welcome to Dixie Bell's Facebook page. This is the Dixie Bell Paint Company main page of Facebook. And my name is Tracy. I am Tracy Bellion. My company that, uh, my furniture painting company is called Tracy's Fancy. And I am a brand ambassador for Dixie Bell. And I'm here every single Wednesday night, right here, Wednesday nights, seven o'clock central time uh, on Dixie Bell's main page. Wendy, Lou, you're watching. Thank you so much for being here, Wendy. And thank you for my spray bottle. You can see it right up there, right there. Hey, Michelle. Hi, guys. I'm really curious to see what kind of turnout we're going to get tonight. I'm hoping a lot. I'm hoping y'all are needing some general distraction from the goings on in the world. I know, um, I do. So I'm really excited to be out here with y'all tonight. Hello, Patricia. How are you, Carol? I got your sweet message. Thank you so much, honey, for your message. I hope you're feeling okay. Christina, hello there. You guys, um, Yay, she says, of course she's here. Dixie Bell is in the house. There we go. So Dixie Bell is when the brand ambassadors or the retailers or content, any of us, uh, the Dixie Bell family, when we are on here uh, painting and talking, Dixie Bell also is usually behind the scenes and they are there to answer questions once we get started on our project that we might miss. So you get two of us for the price of one, basically. And guess what? It's all free. It's all free information. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much. Yes, Tree Frog Green. We are going with Tree Frog Green tonight. If you're wondering what I'm doing down here, I'm unwinding the microphone because I am going to turn my back to you some tonight. Um, and so I need to get my mic on. Sorry, I'm a couple minutes late. I am coming to you live from San Antonio, Texas. That's where I live. Uh, Dixie Bell is based out of Florida, and um, you can shop nation. You can shop around the world for Dixie Bell. Actually, you can ship around the world from Dixie Bell. Shop online if you want. I have an affiliate link that I've posted at the top of this video. If there's something that I'm doing tonight that inspires you and makes you want to try it. Um, please feel free to just click that link and you can purchase. We also have retailers all over the country and they sometimes are watching. Feel free retailers if you're watching to post a link to your business page as well. Um, if you've got a retailer in your area that you're looking for, you can go in and actually touch the paint, feel the paint, and they are experts as well. Our retailers uh, go through what we call Dixie Bell University and um, I look adorable, Margot. Oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you. I just put lipstick on and I put lipstick on my fingers and rubbed it on my cheeks because I'm like, oh crap, I haven't even looked in the mirror. So thank you so much. And my headband is from Lush and it has Brussels sprouts on it because y'all know I'm a major health advocate and I had to buy the scarf that had uh, Brussels sprouts on it. All right, so I'm gonna plug y'all in. Hold on just a sec. There we go. How's that sound? You guys let me know how it sounds. My back is great. Thank you, sweetheart. Thanks, Deb, for asking. All right, so what are we going to do tonight? Tonight, we are going to design on this Bombay chest right here behind me. Um, oh, I am so sorry. I am so sorry. None in your era, area, Erin. I, I love having you on here. Thank you so much for watching. Hello, Shira. Something that we love for you to do. Oh my goodness. I did not know my dog was out. I'm so sorry. Sorry, Dixie Bell. I think my, oh, that's my bag. Uh, she doesn't usually come out here. Um, something that we love for you to do is tell us where you're from. We would love to know where you're from. We would love to know if you are new to Dixie Bell paint. Do you even know what chalk mineral paint is? Uh, chalk mineral paint is was a game changer for me. I spent years trying to make my own chalk paint in my garage and selling furniture like that. I did it all with latex and latex has its, you know, it, it's a paint, it's a great paint for its purposes. But it is really not a paint that's meant to go on, on wood, especially furniture. And chalk mineral paint can go on absolutely anything. There are no boundaries when it comes to Dixie Bell's paint products. And Dixie Bell also is a one-stop shop. They offer all sorts of products to go along with your painting, which I'm going to show you tonight. We've got all kinds of stuff laid out up here. So today is a big day. Hey, Pat. Hello there, hun. Today is the day um, that we are able to talk about the new Dixie Bell Moose. Um, so I know if you follow a lot of the different uh, retailers and ambassadors, you will already have seen this, but I wanted to bring it out and show you guys tonight. This is actually what the packaging looks like right here. These little jars, 
This is it right here. And there are four colors. So these are the four colors right here. I honestly, I honestly considered doing all four of these in Harlequin pattern on the front of this chest. Oh my gosh, my dog's not usually out here. Um, and I, I wanna scream at Matt, but he is way around the horseshoe on the other side of the house. And that is, he is not gonna come get her. <sighs> anyway, I, I considered using all four. They are metallic, they are amazing. So they are sort of between a gilding wax and a paint itself. It's called a mousse, I think, if it's okay for me to say. Um, yes, Pat, they're amazing. Um, I think if it's okay to say, these are, I think, a happy accident when it happened. Um, they were not looking for a mousse. They came they were trying to come up with some reformulated gilding waxes, which they've also done. Um, and this, this came out of the chemistry lab. And they were like, hey girls, what do y'all think about this? So they sent it all to us and we were like, that, that is cool, that is good. So it's got a very, very creamy consistency very creamy consistency. It's not what, oh, that one is very thin. That one's thinner than normal. I need to stir it. I didn't stir that. Sorry, guys. So if you, st here, this is what it's like, because I did stir the gold, because we're going to use the gold tonight. So here we go. That's the gold. See? Very creamy consistency. That one needs to be stirred. I just had these shipped to me. So that one, I'm sure that most of it is in the bottom. Let's look at these. Oh yeah, this one's good. I must have played, I've played with these. This is the silver as well. So there you go, it's a little, I still need to stir that too. But anyway, they're awesome. They're heavily, heavily pigmented. They catch the light beautifully. So it really, really shows the metallic sparkle in them. And then they also have this one called Garnet, which they're calling a red, but I honestly think it's very creamy. This one's very creamy. It almost, it's like a, they're calling it garnet. They're calling it a red, but I don't see it as a red. It's more of like a copper pen, like a brand spanking new copper penny to me. That's how I feel in comparison to the copper. These are the two. This is, this is like a used copper penny. Maybe this is like a brand new one. What would y'all call this? I mean, they're calling it garnet, but it is definitely red in comparison beautiful right so we are in my design of this piece right back here i'm going with the gold y'all know i'm a major gold advocate I, I love gold love 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 gold so let me grab a rag hold tight hold just a second okay i had my little I hadn't had one that was liquidy like that. Evidently, that one needs to be stirred. Um, so I get a little mess down here before my dog walks through it and before I sit on it. Now my garage floor is a beautiful metallic copper. <laughs> it looks great. Um, okay, so this is what we're gonna do. This piece behind me, I'm gonna introduce a couple of other new products and this wasn't even meant to be, all right? I mean, this is persimmon, that is good. Yeah, it is kind of a, it is kind of a persimony, persimony color, I would say. They're made um, to make more definition to your piece. They are very, they're, I use them straight on. Like I, I can use them straight on the hardware. I use them, they, they go right on, they dry hard. Um, it works like that for me. But they're also, you can uh, blend them. You can uh, use them as a sheer, just like some sheer coverage, or you can en enhance color that you've got underneath it. Um, the same thing, but I'm gonna use it like straight up. Uh, oh, sorry, Nina, Dixie Bell, I didn't answer you. Did you ask that already? They're not available yet. Um, I believe it's the Dixie Bell. Will you answer that question? Is it like the 18th or something that they're going to be available to purchase to the cons to the end consumer? Today was the day that the retail, the premier retailers could order theirs for their store. So we got to talk about it. So you're, you're, if you have a premier retailer in your area, they have probably placed an order for them today and they will be arriving at their store um, soon but i don't think they're ready to sell i don't think they're able to sell to the public till a certain date and i'm hoping dixie bell will answer that i was thinking it was around like the 18th or something but i might be wrong all right so let's talk about something else here uh, this piece right here is I, I called it a bombay chest but it's really not a bombay chest it's flat on the front i i think bombays have more of a pot belly look to them or at least a curve to the front and this is very very flat on the front but it allows me hi julie hi there it allows me to um um 
really, really work on the design here and I don't have a curve to work around. I just like that it's flat. But if you notice when you look at the drawers, there is a bordered out area. So I was like, you know, do I need to accent that border and only treat the middle? Do I need to accent this border and only treat this middle? Should I ignore the border and just do drawer to drawer to drawer? Um, I didn't really want to just do another Bombay chest with a damask stencil on the front. I don't know. That just seems so ordinary. So today, about an hour ago, my daughter was here and she um, saw the new stencils. So let me show you the new stencils. Same with these. We get to talk about these today. So the new stencils, this is the damask. Y'all have already seen these. We've already been using them on our furniture to kind of uh, get, you know, build hype. I did this on the side of uh, jewelry armoire, and I also did it on another piece of furniture. I've used it on two pieces of furniture already. This one's brand new, though. Um, this is the new damask. I love it. Love, love, love it. Uh, these measure 16 by 20. So there's 20 inches tall and 16 inches wide. So this is a new damask. I love it. It's very royal looking, right? And actually that's called royal damask. It's a very, I love, you see why I love it so much, guys? Look at there. Y'all know I have a crown as part of my branding and that I love that it has the crown in there. So very pretty. I love damask. It's timeless. Um, I considered it strongly. But then when Haley, my daughter, was here, she was like, Mom, do this. Okay, here's another stencil. This is the Moroccan stencil. It's absolutely gorgeous. 16 by 20 as well. It's an all-over stencil as well. I didn't want to put this on here because this has a real classic look to it. I just didn't feel like that all of this went real well with all of the carved moldings on the bottom. Thank you, Dixie Bell, for answering all of the questions. Um, and we'll talk about silk in a second as well. Okay, so... There's that, but this is the third stencil, and Haley loves this, and so do I, and I'm like, I'm doing that. She's like, Mom, you've done a lot of black and white lately. Yes, I have, but I love black and white. I love black and white. So I love black and white houndstooth. I think it is made, houndstooth is made to be black and white. I think it is just sharp, crisp, timeless. I absolutely love it. So I said, she goes, Mom, you need to do black and white. Um, you need to do Harlequin on those drawer fronts. I said, then I'm doing black and white and I'm doing the body of, this is it right here. I'm doing black and white houndstooth on just the drawer fronts here, here and here. This, this no, because this is too small. So I think I'm gonna stripe this, but these are houndstooth. Guys, I did houndstooth years ago, probably about I don't know, probably eight or nine years ago, a black and white houndstooth on the sides of a dress, on the sides of a chest of drawers um, with nail head trim on it. Oh my gosh, it was so gorgeous. It was a stacked French provincial. The body of the piece is gonna be tree frog green. I love tree frog green. So I felt like this was very holiday. It's that time of year. Um, we need a little cheer and I love black and white and green. I think this is classic. I think it's very, um, very uh oh my gosh oh my gosh oh my gosh i'm drawing a blank what does this remind y'all of who does this remind y'all of uh uh kate spade kate spade right kate spade very kate spade I love it. Love, love, love it. Uh, there's another, there's a girl that I follow online called Jennifer Dimples and Giggles or something like that. And she has a lot of green, black, and white in her house. I love this. So that's what we're going to do. Now, I know tree frog green is really bold, um, but I am going to black wax over it to get into all these gorgeous carvings that are on the body. So that's the plan. Um, so I'm telling you up front, so you know as you watch me paint this over the ne this next week and then you see the final product project you'll know where my brain was and how I was thinking okay so we settled on houndstooth I am going to be going to be using the moose to um, I'm thinking that I probably will use the moose in this gold trimmed out area that's what I'm thinking if not I will at least use it on the hardware um, Kristen hi sweetie good to see you hun um, I think it is gonna be beautiful sorry I forgot to put my phone on do not disturb I'm on do not disturb now all right, we're good. Okay, so the next thing that I want to talk to you about is Gray Boss. What? Yes, Gray Boss. So, why do we need Gray Boss? Does anyone know? I bought Tree Frog Green after I saw the two product tests you did. Yes, Carol, I know you did. And isn't it a fantastic, it's so overlooked. It's an overlooked color. 
It needs a lot of love. Babe, um, Lucy was out here with me a minute ago. Did you put her up? Yeah. Thank you very much. Did you need me? No. Okay. Um, I've been saved. The dog will not come back out. Why do we need gray boss? Does anyone know? Have, y'all, have, have others already talked to y'all about this? So I thought it was like this huge secret. I did not know we'd be, we're going to be able to talk about it now, but we can. So this was a sample. See how they sent it to me? Gray boss right here. So not, you know, yay, you did. Yari, good to see you on here. Oh my gosh, I'm so happy to see you. Hi, Diana. Hello there. Is my dryer running? Yes, Debbie. Thank you. Matt, could you please turn the dryer off? These microphones are here and on our phone pick up everything. They pick up all the noise. Isn't that crazy? Someone asked my dryer was running. It was Debbie. Um, you know, did y'all hear all the racket? Did your, did, y'all, did your mom say racket? What's all that racket? You kids making all that racket. That racket in the dryer was my overalls that y'all see me wear all the time. It was my overalls. They make that noise. All right, so gray primer. I'm going to use gray primer on this, and I'm going to talk to y'all about it while I'm doing it. Why would you need gray primer? There's a dip. Why would Dixie Belle come out with gray primer and still have white primer and still have clear primer? Well, we already know the difference when you should use clear and white. We've already talked about that a lot. Gray boss is to help with darker colors. Honestly, in my opinion, let me tell you how I think that it helps. Um, that's what I feel like most people will say, but in my experience... Um, in my experience, it actually helps with, it helps with the colors that are super sheer. That's what I think. So to me, those are always your deepest pinks and your, uh, not, not like, uh, not even a pink, not even a pink. Let's say red, let's say honky tonk red or, oh my gosh, Florida orange for sure. Florida orange, um, apricot those colors can be affected by what is underneath them. So if you put white primer on, first of all, if you don't use a primer and you're using Florida orange, you're going to see through it. It just, I don't know why. Dark colors like blacks and midnight blue and, uh, you know, like the dark, dark colors, they have a lot of pigment in them, which you would think that the Florida oranges and the reds do as well, but they, for some reason, they don't. And they're very, very hard to get good coverage. However, Honky Tonk wrong complete, Honky Tonk Red completely proved me wrong in this theory. And I did it on live video. I was like, oh, you can't see through Honky Tonk Red, but you can see through Florida orange at first, at least coat one for sure. So if you put white behind Florida orange, you're going to get a much brighter, brighter orange. It will affect the the end color of your orange. If you put gray behind Florida orange, you're going to get, um, it's it's a stronger orange and it's gonna cover faster. So if you put gray behind it and maybe one coat of Florida orange, you might be good. You might be good with that. Whereas if you put white behind it and Florida orange, you're probably still gonna see that bright white coming through and you're probably for sure gonna need a second coat of it. So I think it's more helpful with colors that you actually can see through a little bit. You get more blockage with the gray than you do with the white. I just think that that's how it works. But I also, if you need a primer behind like a dark, super dark color, then I of course would use gray as well. I would still use the white primer um, behind your more mainstream middle colors. You know, your Savannah Mist, your The Gulf, uh, The Gulf, Savannah Mist, um, Rebel Yellow, Lucky lavender. Those colors, I would I would still use the white behind. Um, do you think you can use gray under fluff or cotton? Absolutely. If I'm painting that whites is difficult to see if I missed a spot. Absolutely, you could. Hi, Debbie. Thank you, hun. Thank you so much. Can you use these without sanding? Absolutely, Teresa. Absolutely. I'm about to show you that right now. I'm about to do that. Guys, do me a big favor as well. Would y'all hit that share button? I always forget to ask y'all to do that. Always, always, always. So please, please, please hit that share button. And as a matter of fact, Dixie Bell. Are we going to do, can I do a giveaway with, are we doing a giveaway with the moose? Can you, uh, are we, oh shoot, I forgot. Are we doing that? What do we need to do? What do we need to do for the giveaway? Can you show me? Dixie Bell says, yes, you. What do I do to do the giveaway? How do I do this? (laughs) What do I need to have them do? What do I need to have them do? Um, uh, Yes, you can. What should I have you do? Okay, tell me, tell me. (laughs) Oh my gosh, I hate this. 
<laughs> you shared, Nina. Of course you did. Thank you. Um, tell us what, why you think moose would be more helpful than... I can't do it. Oh my gosh. These are always so hard for me. Um, no. Name this. Name name Garnet. Garnet Red. I, that's it. So this is Copper. This is Garnet. And they're calling it Red, but I still don't think it's Red. Name it. Name it for me. Give, if you were going to name Garnet, what, what do you think Garnet most resembles? Okay, we're not going to rename it, guys. It's Garnet. But what do you think this most resembles? Tell me what you think Dixie Bell's new Garnet gemstone mousse, gemstone mousse in Garnet, what do you think it most resembles? Give me something. Ooh, rust. Heather said rust. Coral. Oh, I like it. Okay, so Dixie Bell's going to choose the winner. You have to be watching. It has to be live. You have to comment while I'm live. They will choose this winner and they will let us know who that is. Garnet equals sexy. Okay, so here we go. Someone asked, I think it was a lady by the name of Teresa. Oh, paprika. I like that, Susan. Uh, she asked, do you have to sand? No, this, this chest has not been sanded. This chest has only been washed with white lightning. All right, so I am going to prime, what was in there? I am gonna prime this with, uh, oh, this is a new brush, shoot. I am priming this, where's my rag? With the gray boss. Now, I'm gonna use gray boss instead of white, just so that I can show you what it looks like. It's got great coverage. I'm not using one of my synthetic brushes right now, actually. I'm using one of the good Dixie Bell chip brushes because I love these brushes so much and I haven't had them in a while. Um, they were out of stock, it seemed like forever, and I actually got some. So, um, but the, it is kind of dragging. I probably should use a synthetic brush. So the, why am I priming the front of these drawers? Because I'm gonna be, paint just these center sections white. Everything else is gonna be green. Just the center of each drawer is gonna be white. Um, when you're doing either stripes or houndstooth, or you know, a harlequin, whatever it is, do your lightest color first, and then come back in with your dark color to do whatever design you were gonna do on top of that. So I'm doing white first. Now, why am I priming? I'm priming because I'm gonna paint white. And the, this chest of drawers, I don't know for sure that it's gonna have a, oh, I like y'all's ideas here. I don't know for sure that it's gonna bleed through, but just in case, I mean, I'm not going to take my chance. And this this wood actually has like some knots and stuff in it. So I just had a feeling that I'm going to have bleed through. If I painted white without putting a blocker, a stain blocker on here, and then I spent all the time doing my black hound's tooth, and then I sealed it with my top coat, that top coat, because it's a water-based top coat, and this is chalk paint, um, which remains very open. It's a very natural porous paint it would pull through because of like osmosis of some sort of osmosis reaction chemical reaction it would pull through any wood tannings from through the paint back out to that top coat and what bleed through looks not good bleed through is pink or rust or orangey color it just sort of depends on what what you're pulling through but it can pull through uh, nicotine stains and oil stains as well. So just to be on the safe side, I don't want to spend all that time making my beautiful harlequin, uh, not harlequin, but my beautiful hound's tooth and then put a top coat on it and have bleed through show up on all of the white hound's tooth. That would, that would really just, you know, suck. So, so I'm priming just like that. None of the rest of this piece is going to get primed. Now I could use boss white, Correct. I could use Boss White, but because I'm promoting Boss Gray right now, it's also not available to purchase yet, but the retailers are stocking up on it, and we all will, of course, let you know when it becomes available, just for you to try out under some of those colors that are a little bit more difficult to 
to cover. Now I can see right here that I've got a spot that's coming through already, just a tiny little spot. I know that my boss is gonna take care of it. BOSS is actually an acronym. It stands for Blocks, Odors, and Stops Stains. Um, and uh, Blocks, Odors, and Stops Stains. So there we go. I've got all my little center spots are covered and I am good with that. I'm just gonna do one coat and that's it. So to answer Teresa's question, no, you do not need to use, um, you do not need to sand. Now, sometimes you'll need to, sometimes you'll need to sand. If, you're, if your painted surface or surface that you're working on uh, is not secure, you know, if you've got paint chips or peeling or rough spots or anything like that, you'll wanna sand those away. But if it looks as good as this piece did, all I need to do is just prime so that I don't have bleed through. And um, I know, isn't it genius? It is. Um, I'm gonna scroll back because I saw, you do not need to use any primers or sealers with silk all in one. It has all that built into it. Okay, so I know everybody is like going crazy about the silk paint. Um, yes, silk paint is in Europe, but it is not here in the United States yet. We are um, planning to have it here, hopefully very, very soon. And um, it is an all-in-one paint. Paint. There are 20 colors, only 20 colors. So um, it doesn't have the wide, vast range of colors that the chalk paint, the chalk mineral paint does. Um, but it does, it's kind of a, they call it, I think, the Hamptons color palette. Uh, so it's got a very rich, beachy color palette, um, very kind of neutral in colors, and then a few stronger contrasting colors. Um, but it does have a built-in primer and a built-in top coat. So it is a one and done kind of paint, which is amazing for especially beginners, for any of you that like a super clean finish, um, and for any of you that just want to do things, um, you don't want to do all the blending and the spritzing of the water and all those kind of things. Um, Amy, I don't I think it is a little bit more expensive because I mean a little bit high it's more expensive because I think it has all of that stuff built into it um, where do you find them Ronnie uh, this one I found this one on marketplace I get most of my stuff on marketplace so this you do not need this if you're using silk paint but right now I just painted in uh, I'm gonna be painting in cotton. I'll be doing this in cotton. This is cotton white. So once this dries, I'll be covering this in cotton. And when I do, you don't have to use water, but you'll get a really, really flawless finish if you'll use um, a mister bottle or a spray bottle. My mister bottle, I'd given all the other ones away and mine broke and I've been using a spray bottle for months and months and months. And Dixie Belle had been out of these and a super, super sweet lady, just like all of y'all, um, sent me a message one night after a video. I guess she was tired of hearing me whine about it. And she said, I'm going to send you a bottle. And so she ordered me one from somewhere else and sent it to me. And I'm so happy. I'm so happy to have it. So thank her so much. I love you guys so much. All right, let's, while this is drying, let's go ahead and put some, let's put some tree green on and see how this is going to look over here on the side. We'll just do it over over on the side, we'll let our primer dry. Always go back and babysit, guys. You gotta babysit your paint, that's what I call it. So right up here by this little hole, you can't really see it, but there's a drip. So I'm just gonna do just like that. And I often also will pounce. Y'all will see me as well um, pounce. So sometimes my primers, I pounce. I don't need to do that on this. It gives a really, really cool finish. It gives like a sprayed on finish. It looks like your, your paint has been sprayed on instead of um, brushed on, which it's just a cool look. I like it. You can do that while your paint's drying, just like that. Just kind of breaks it up. It's the same, same mentality that you use when you're doing like a, a resin pour or an epoxy pour and you break up your epoxy, same sort of thing. So you can brush it on straight and then just go back and pounce it out. Anyone that takes any of my classes, y'all know where we love to pounce. Pounds, pounds. Love that look. So I'll just do that like that. Okay, so that's that. But you got to babysit. You got to go back. See, I've got some drips coming through right here too. So little excess primer that I don't want and you just don't want. Dried drips are not fun and they don't look good. All right, so now where are, whew, where are the brushes? All right, so I'm going to use my flat medium brush, my very last one. I don't have another one. I love it so much. It's my favorite brush. I also have this one on standby, which is my mini 
I love my uh, Dixie Belle synthetic brushes. They are out of stock right now. I checked right before I went live because sometimes they have them and sometimes they don't because we have been in a crunch since COVID because the gentleman who makes these in America, just a little family man and his, he had like a little tiny workforce and then people got sick with COVID and I think he's on his own and he's having a really hard time getting caught up. He hand makes these. He hand makes these brushes. So um, it's taken a while for him to get caught up. So I take really good care of my flat medium. I've had it forever. Um, and you can see I washed it a five zillion times and they just hold up beautifully. All right, so look, woo, woo, tree frog green. Tree frog green is another paint that's affected by white, white primer for sure. So if you felt like you needed, if you were gonna be painting like a mahogany piece and you were gonna paint, um, will the primer work over French polish? Diane, what do you mean with the primer work over French polish? I don't know what French polish is. Can you tell me what's French polish? Tree Frog Green is a, is a paint that if you put it straight over wood, um, if you're going to be, sorry, we had an internet glitch. If you're going to be painting over mahogany uh, or something like that that you thought might bleed, and it will bleed. It'll bleed through your bright green. It sure will. So if you were going to prime tree frog green and you needed to use a primer, I would use gray for sure because uh, it's definitely considered a darker color. And I think you would be able, I think you would have to use less coats if you used a gray undercoat. It's just really, really cool that they did that because honestly, anytime I would paint Florida orange or red or tree frog green, a lot of times I would put a layer of gray paint down. I would just use one of my Dixie Belle grays and then I would put uh, green over it. So I have a cabinet that is a ball and claw that I want to paint, but it has a French polish finish. Man, girl, I don't know. Looks like a really shiny finish. No, I did not use slick stick. No, Dixie Belle, she's just saying a, a finish. I don't know. I don't, yeah, it goes over everything. It works over everything. So I think your primer would work over it. I'm going to say yes. If it's a super slick, like uh, if it feels like Formica or I don't know what that is, but if it feels like Formica or, you know, a uh, tile, if it feels like that slick, uh, Dixie Belle has a product called slick stick and you could use that first. French polishing is a wood finish technique that results, oh yeah, very high gloss furniture with a deep, oh look at you with all this information. I didn't even know that. Uh, with a deep color. Mm, mm, that's, gonna, that's gonna be a tough call. That's something I think you're gonna have to, if anyone feels like answering her and helping her out, but if it is a super, super, super high gloss finish, you might need slick stick hard to say. Uh, the only reason I'm saying that, I would normally never say that for wood. I would just say, nope, your, your boss primer will take care of it and give you enough tooth. It has great adhesion. adhesion. Um, but I did have a client who had a table and chairs, dining room table and chairs uh, with a super, super, super high gloss finish. And um, I, we ended up, Boss wasn't holding, so we ended up having to use Slick Stick. And yeah, Dixie Bell's saying that you can use Slick Stick on our boss even, she's saying, or our boss. So I would use Slick Stick. I would do that first. That would, that, that would be my go-to. I'm, I'm going to say Slick Stick. It sounds like a super high gloss finish. All right, do y'all see how I pounced that out while I was talking? While I was talking to y'all? So this will be, the whole cabinet's going to be green. It's going to be so pretty. So, so pretty. What time is it? Oh, nine, 740. 740. So now you see why I said holiday, holiday vibe, right? Even though guys, when it's done, I don't, I think it's just like I said, it's going to have a super, uh, really cool Kate Spade vibe to it. But, um, but perfect timing for me because I love to post holiday photos. So I think I'll stage it and do a staged, uh, holiday staged photo with it and do a non-holiday staged photo because also after we get through winter and we're ready for spring think about this this is this is the mind of someone who has an online business so i'm going to paint this piece perfect for the holidays right and i'll stage it for christmas and i will post it and you guys can see that and it puts everyone in the holiday vibe but I'm also going to think about it in the springtime because we're going to be ready for some green, right? We're going to be ready for some green and spring and it also have that vibe. 
if you decorate like that. So I think I'll do that as well. And then I'll have photos for both times. Um, late again, Allie, no worries at all, girl. Good to see you on here, hon. I met with Allie today. Okay, can you guys see down here at the bottom? I'm gonna do down at the bottom. Let's move you down. And so this heavily carved area deep into those carved areas. So I just go ahead and just pounce the whole thing and it's gonna give kind of the sprayed on look. It's a great finish. You just pounce all the layers, all of them. Oh my goodness, I love this color so much. The first coat, uh, you'll have some shadowing that you'll see through the first coat. Second coat is gonna go on deep. The thing about the paint, you guys, is it dry, especially if you're in a drier environment, but my paint usually is dry within about 20 minutes. I never spend 20 minutes, unless it's storming, we're having a lot of humidity and we've got storms, but other than that, my paint's dry in about 20 minutes. I'm also in a climate controlled area too. If you're painting outside, that might be, it might be different for you. But you see how quick and easy, if I wasn't talking to y'all, I could have already had like the whole entire front of this, the whole entire front of this piece done. Really doesn't take long at all. It's a lot of instant gratification, which is super important to me because I tend to be a little impatient. Right, Miss Allie? Is Miss Allie Terry still with us? We had a long talk today about being patient. I feel like I'm talking to a kid. <laughs> Do y'all see the feet? Aren't they gorgeous? Oh, they're so gorgeous. Gorgeous. I'm pretty sure I'll do the ball, the claw and ball and claw foot. I'm pretty sure I'll do the ball in, um, in the gold as well. So, um, all right. So I hope that that gives you guys um, some inspiration to uh, do something for your home and green and black and white. If you've never tried it, try it. I challenge you to try green and black and white. Tree frog green, caviar, and cotton. I usually use fluff, but I'm using cotton. It's super, super crisp contrast. So that's that. Um, keep your eye out for the gray boss. Keep your eye out for your hounds to stencil and um, also the gold moose. That's all I got for you tonight. That was fun. I know it's gonna be it's gonna be really really pretty. I think it is. All right, guys. Well, I'm gonna let you go. I will I'll move on over to my page. Um, oh yay! Congratulations, Stacy. Thank you for showing your interest in the new gemstone moose. You have won the giveaway, Stacy. Who? I wonder who it was. I guess y'all have already talked. I'm sure they messaged each other. That is awesome. Congratulations, y'all. Give some hearts to Stacy. Yay! You love blue, white, and green too. I love that too, Susan. I do too. A little bit of cobalt blue thrown in there. Mmm, beautiful. So beautiful. Hope to start my project, my first project soon. Teresa, I hope I answered your questions and can showed you how easy it is. Now I'm gonna let all this dry, and then once this gray is dry, I'm gonna go back with white, and then I'm gonna do my black hound's tooth, and then I'm gonna get a small art brush, and I'm gonna start filling in around it with the green and the gold. It's gonna be beautiful. Super easy. Thank you, Kristen, for hanging out this long. Thank you, Laurie and Wendy. Thanks, you guys. Y'all have a wonderful night. Hang in there. Um, thank you for hanging out with me and helping to distract me from all the stuff. Love you guys, and I will see y'all either over on my page or I'll see y'all next week, okay? See you later. Bye-bye.